In her book, Mama Bear Apologetics, Hilary Morgan Ferrier writes that, It is easy to miss the importance of apologetics if you haven't witnessed the sheer number of victims being held captive by bad philosophy. Apologetics may not seem important until you witness firsthand the consequences of bad ideas. I'd like to share with you some statistics about the youth exodus that should be concerning. So what exactly is the youth exodus? The youth exodus refers to the amount of Christian youth that stop attending church. 45 to 48 percent of youth leave church after their freshman year in college and never return. After age 15, 60 percent of Christian youth are disconnected from their church. Frequent church attendance for high schoolers is 44%. Frequent church attendance for college students, 25%. 61% of 20-somethings that attended church in their teens are no longer spiritually engaged. 70% of teens who attended youth group stopped attending church within two years of their high school graduation. For many years, most people assume that the problem originated in college probably because that's when we see the church attendance numbers take their most drastic drop. However, we must take into account that college is when kids no longer have good old mom and dad waking them up and driving them to Sunday school. So while college is and remains a contributing factor, these numbers are an external manifestation of an internal disconnection that started years earlier. The ticket was already purchased, college was just the first opportunity to use it. In three independent surveys conducted by Josh McDowell, the Barna Group, and researcher Mike Napa, it was discovered that among self-proclaimed Christian teens, 41% were uncertain if Jesus was physically resurrected. 63% didn't believe Jesus was the one true Son of God. 44% believed that the Bible was just one of many authoritative voices about Jesus. 33% believe that Jesus is not the only way to heaven. Only 5% studied the Bible daily, down from 8% in 1991. A growing majority believe that the Holy Spirit is just a symbol or presence of the power of God rather than a person of the Trinity. 60% are uncertain or unsettled that the Bible can be trusted as a source of authority. And 70% express doubt that what the Bible says about Jesus is actually true. Some people may be under the impression that we need not worry because all of these kids that leave their faith will eventually return, right? This hopeful belief, however, does not reflect the statistics. A LifeWay study found that out of the 70% of teens who left church during their college years, only about half of them eventually returned. This means that with each successive generation, we are essentially losing about 35% of our church population. Others may think these statistics don't apply to their children because of the way that they've decided to raise them. Because my kids go to Awana, youth group, Christian school, or homeschool, then they'll be okay. But again, this expectation doesn't match reality. America's research group conducted a study that found that kids who grew up in a Sunday school environment were more likely to have a secular worldview than those who didn't. Apologist Frank Turek has astutely noted that what we win them with, we win them too. The sad truth is that in many cases, we've won our kids to fun, friends, and pizza, but not necessarily to Christ. Some parents might see the value in apologetics, but might think that their kids don't need any kind of apologetic training until they're older or maybe of college age. But here's the thing. The American Research Group study noted, we've always been trying to prepare our kids for college, and I still think that's a critical thing to do, of course. But it turns out that only 11% of those who have left the church did so during college years. Almost 90% of them were lost in middle school and high school. By the time they got to college, they were already gone. About 40% are leaving the church during elementary and middle school years. This is the youth exodus. And if we don't take the initiative to do something about it, it will only get worse. So. What can we do about it? The answer is simple, but it's gonna take some time and effort on our part. First, we need to have at least a basic grasp on what we believe and why. Be in your Bible daily, whether that's reading a physical copy or listening to it through a podcast or an app. Make sure you have an understanding of core Christian doctrines. You don't need to be an expert in theology, but you should be able to explain your faith and answer simple questions about it. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. 
Secondly, gather resources to help you along your journey. If you're a reader, there's a wealth of apologetics material at your disposal. Regarding your own knowledge, you can start with a few of these books that will teach you the ropes and give you a basic understanding of apologetics. Tactics by Gregory Kukul is a must read. This book will teach you how to navigate conversations, answer tough questions, and examine the claims that others make. Few apologetics books out there are as practical as this. On Guard by William Lane Craig may be the best entry level book to what is commonly referred to as classical apologetics. If you're unfamiliar with classical arguments for the existence of God or the resurrection of Jesus, this book is a fast track to a lot of useful information. Cold Case Christianity and God's Crime Scene by J. Warner Wallace are both books written by a cold case homicide detective that help teach proper investigation while providing clear explanations of popular apologetic arguments. These are all entry level books rich with knowledge. A little bit of study goes a long way and reading any one of these books can really be life altering. There's also a wealth of apologetics books written specifically for parents and apologetics books for kids. Mama Bear Apologetics is a groundbreaking book that can help you empower your kids to challenge cultural lies. Written specifically for busy parents, Mama Bear offers a brief synopsis of various worldviews, religions, and ideologies and the tools you'll need to confront them. If you're a Christian parent, this book is an absolute must read. Talking with Your Kids About God by Natasha Crane is an excellent study tool that gives you examples of actual conversations you can have with your children about a variety of topics. It almost functions as an apologetics devotional that can be shared and experienced by the whole family. Cold Case Christianity for Kids is exactly what it sounds like. Written specifically for children, Wallace distills all of his teaching about case making and arguments into a simple and easy to read format. This is a wonderful way to teach kids early on how to think through tough issues and examine evidence. Melissa Kane Travis has a series of children's books that teach very young children about Christianity through an apologetic lens. I particularly like How Do We Know God Is Really There, where Travis guides the reader through the Kalam cosmological argument for God's existence in a way that a toddler can understand. If you're a fan of On Guard, William Lane Craig also has a series of children's books similar to these. Maybe you're not a reader at all. While I would suggest that you eventually become a reader, there are other resources available to you. Podcasts like Ferrer's Mama Bear Apologetics, Turek's I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, Wallace's Cold Case Christianity, Kukul's Stand to Reason, Jeros's Veracity Hill, and Petruzzi's Capturing Christianity are all great places to listen rather than read. These are especially helpful for busy parents and can be utilized while on the drive to work, at work, depending on your job, or at home while doing house chores. If you prefer to watch rather than listen, there's also a wealth of apologetic material available on free video platforms like YouTube. I recently touched on this topic in a previous video, so if you're interested, go check out top 10 apologetics channels on YouTube. Besides gathering resources and learning apologetics, it's important to carve out family time. After you've gathered resources, create time and space with your family for regular discussion. Intentionally ask your children difficult questions about Christianity. We aren't merely teaching them to know the answers, we're teaching them how to find the answers. Remember that you aren't meant to do any of this alone. Find others who are like-minded and willing to be an encouragement to one another. We can share our excitement and confidence in defending the truth of Christianity by starting apologetics book clubs in our churches, incorporating more apologetics into Sunday school classes for all ages, and participating in online discussion groups. As a piece of coal cannot stay hot on its own, so enthusiasm will dissipate if we keep it to ourselves. Finally, all of this will take time and practice. As I mentioned in the beginning, this will take effort on our part, but the effort is well worth it. Every generation faces its own kind of spiritual rapids. For our kids, the battle is especially fierce around ideas and morality. Christianity is no longer the accepted norm, and the number of openly atheistic families is growing. We may not want to jump into the deep end of theology and apologetics, but we will lest we see our kids dragged down by the rushing rapids of bad ideas. Kids are smart, and they ask really good questions. And we owe it to them to have some answers. <laughs>